This is your forecast first. Good morning, everyone. We're looking at some pretty calm wind speeds at the moment, but they're expected to pick up today. That's as we're going to be seeing our next cold front move into the area. Six miles per hour right now in El Paso, eight in Juarez, 11 in Cloudcroft, six in Rio Doso. As for those temperatures, 57 degrees in El Paso, nearly 60 degrees, 56 in Las Cruces, 48 in Deming. Now we're going to continue to see some pretty much above average temperatures throughout the rest of today. Going to be reaching 78 degrees by 5 p.m. I'll go ahead and let you know what exactly your high is for today. Coming up in your full forecast. KTSM 9 News today starts right now. Coming up, the city of El Paso releasing new vaccination data. What it entails. Plus, Governor Greg Abbott is set to visit the Texas-Mexico border today to discuss the state's border security efforts. And an investigation update on the incident that killed Las Cruces Public School Superintendent Karen Trujillo. From the station putting local first, this is KTSM 9 News Today. Good morning. Thank you for choosing KTSM 9 News. Today, I'm Susie Castillo. And I'm Jay Russell. In what he calls, quote, ongoing humanitarian crisis, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is set to address the topic today. Governor Greg Abbott will be holding a press conference today in Mission, Texas, near the U.S.-Mexico border. He is set to discuss the state's border security efforts. Prior to the press conference, the governor will be having a briefing from a reps on the U.S. Border Patrol, Texas Department of Safety, and Texas National Guard. He is set to also take part in an aerial tour of the border. The press conference is set to begin at 11 this morning. Make sure to look for updates on air and online from KTSM. It's 502, and meanwhile, authorities and advocates here in El Paso prepare to receive hundreds of migrants being flown into the borderland. El Paso Matters was first to report the unexpected development. Federal authorities say officials in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas are overwhelmed. El Paso is set to receive two flights of Rio Grande Valley each day. The daily flights will carry around 135 would-be refugees who would then be processed in our city. The director of the El Paso's Annunciation House confirms that he's been told to expect two planes per day starting now. Now, the Annunciation House also is making an arrangement to the house of all migrants expected to arrive and also to test them for COVID-19 when they arrive. To our coronavirus coverage, this morning's number just coming into our newsroom. The El Paso Public Health Department is reporting 17 more virus-related deaths today. The total number of deaths now above 2,200. The city also reporting 257 new cases in the borderland. Active cases stand just above 4,500. More than 118,000 COVID-19 patients are now considered recovered. That recovery rate at about 94%. Taking a look at our hospital numbers, we are seeing a slight changes across the board. We're seeing 252 people hospitalized with the virus. That's an increase of two from yesterday. 102 people are in the ICU. That's a decrease of one. And there's 74 people on ventilators. It's 5.03 and the city and county of El Paso is releasing new COVID-19 data on the EP Strong dashboard. It includes vaccine information for entire community to see. When you visit the site, you'll be able to see how many total vaccine doses were administered and allocated in El Paso. It also shows the number of people in particular zip codes who are partially or fully vaccinated. The data is broken down by age, gender and ethnicity. Transparency, more accountability, and everyone to have everyone has access to this information, and we'll be able to 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 move forward without anybody thinking or trying to figure out what's happening in our community. Right now, the zip codes with the most vaccinated people is 79912 on the west side and 79936 on the east side. And right now, epstrong.org is showing more than 240,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered here in El Paso. And more than 150,000 first doses have been administered, and about 90,000 of those doses have been administered. Data shows that 14.1% of El Paso's population is fully vaccinated. The CDC is warning Americans that getting fully vaccinated is not an automatic ticket to a normal life. The agency released new guidelines Monday. Those fully vaccinated may visit others who are also fully vaccinated and do not have to wear a mask or social distance. Health experts say you can also visit with those 
who are, are at low risk of developing severe complications from the disease. The CDC still warns vaccinated people to continue following the CDC guidelines when out in public. A SWAT standoff came to an end in East El Paso after five hours. Police say a teacher was notified about a domestic violence incident by a six-year-old who was logged in to remote learning. It happened around 9 Monday morning on Cumbre Negra. Our crew on the scene captured the moment the suspect was put into a police car after being checked out by paramedics. According to investigators, the suspect assaulted his wife and broke her cell phone to keep her from calling for help. All this while a child was taking part in a virtual class. Uh, the teacher called 911. Officers responded to that unknown problem and encountered the male subject uh, who uh, was barricaded inside the house and he was holding two small children, uh, six and three years old. Officers say the suspect surrendered at about 2.30 Monday afternoon. Police say the man will face multiple charges including assault and family violence. It's 506 and March is International Nutrition Month and a good time to make some healthy diet changes. Plus, summer is right around the corner too. KTSM 9 News reporter Carla Draxler talked to a nutritionist who shared some good advice. Good morning, Carla. Good morning, Jay. Well, eating healthy might seem a little complicated and expensive, but it doesn't have to be that way. Making small changes at a time can go a long way. Demaris Rosado is a physician's assistant with Texas Tech University Health Sciences and says, Portion control and variety are your key ingredients for a balanced diet. Adding more colorful fruits and vegetables instead of starchy ones and making healthy substitutes for your favorite junk food can overall improve your quality of life. But she says even if you slip sometimes, all is well as long as you fall back on track with your balanced diet. Yes, it may be a little difficult, especially at the beginning, but one step at a time and the more we kind of continuously do it, it does become easier. Rosado says even if you don't have access to fresh fruit and vegetables, looking for low sodium options and washing it out of the can will make it much healthier. And coming up in the next half hour, a local food bank tells us what you should look out for when donating food. Live in the newsroom, I'm Carla Draxler. Back to you. Thank you, Carla. It's 5.07. Now, this weekend, I went to the oldest neighborhood in El Paso, Segundo Barrio, and it was perfect weather out there. I love exploring El Paso. But I need to know, Selena, is weather conditions going to stay like this? It's been gorgeous. Well, we're actually expecting to see some windier conditions. So, although we're going to be seeing some pretty nice temperatures for today, it's probably not the best day to be outside. That's as we're expecting a system to move in. But right now, partly cloudy skies. That's what we're seeing. You can see a lot of moisture really taking over much of the southwest. Not expecting too much from it today. But for those temperatures, 56 degrees in Las Cruces right now. No winds strong enough at the moment to be recorded as for El Paso, 57 degrees, uh, 6 mile per hour wind speed. So we've cooled down uh, quite a bit just within the last few minutes. Now we're going to continue to see these wind speeds really pick up. So this is our main focus for today. But overall right now looking fairly calm. 48 degrees in Deming, 49 in Silver City, 55 in TRC as well as Alamogordo and 54 in Rio Doso. But taking a look at what the difference is just from what we saw past in the past 24 hours. So yesterday at this time, we were seven degrees cooler and we were 12 degrees cooler in Las Cruces. So definitely feeling the warmth for this morning, especially a lot of that warmth that we gathered up from yesterday. Now, the reason why we haven't been able to cool off as much, well, because we do see those partly cloudy conditions keeping us isolated from releasing any heat. But you're at the door forecast. Here's what you can expect. We're gonna be seeing those temperatures slowly rise into the 60s by 9 a.m., reaching the upper 60s come 10 o'clock. Now, we should see temperatures reach the 70s by noontime. And that means another day heading closer to the 80s. I'll have more details on that coming up in your full forecast. Thank you, Selena. It is 509 coming up the latest on the Biden administration's COVID relief bill amid new CDC guidelines. Then the United Kingdom reacted to the Prince Harry and Meghan's explosive TV interview. Stay with KTSM 9 News today. You're watching KTSM 9 News today with Susie Castillo, Jay Russell, and forecaster Selena Quintana. If you have a news story, call our hotline now, 915-533-KTSM. Reach us via social.